Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. And today I wanted to talk about the AAI uh, for VMware. Um, we have both options. So whether you're using data stores uh, within your QNAP um, connected via iSCSI or you're using NFS data stores, uh, we have support for both of those uh, with the VMware VAAI. Um, the big difference with VAAI turned on or off um, is effectively what you're seeing in the pictures here. So with the um, VAAI turned off, um, your ESXi host has to do all copies. So if you were to say migrate one VM uh, from one data store within the QNAP to another data store for, for whatever reason, um, all those uh, reads and writes have to come back to the host and then back to the QNAP. Um, with it turned on, you're effectively just sending a token, a, a command into uh, the NAS, and the NAS is going to do the copy for you. It's going to move the blocks um, from one location to another location. And this works um, iSCSI to iSCSI or NFS to NFS. It doesn't work if you're going from an iSCSI data store to an NFS. That will still go via the host, um, so you can still have the hardware acceleration enabled. It won't stop that function. It's just it will not be a hardware accelerated function uh, when it's going from iSCSI to NFS or vice versa. Um, as we scroll down, some of the better uh, benefits of having it enabled would be block zeroing. So instead of the host having to do all the zeroing uh, when you're creating or initializing a virtual disk, um, everything is done um, directly from the host to the QNAP. It effectively sends the command and it happens within the QNAP. So it's very quick to provision new VMs, uh, new virtual disks, things like that by, by having this enabled. Um, hardware assisted locking is also another massive benefit so that if you have uh, multiple hosts talking to the uh, to the same iSCSI LUN specifically, um, it's going to lock off the blocks uh, that are required for that specific VM for that host so that the performance is much better as well. And one of the, the last major benefits would be uh, thin provisioning and, and space reclamation. If you were to ever uh, delete a, a virtual machine, in this example, if you were to delete VM2 that's 20 gigs, that would sit effectively as reserved space within the QNAP without VAAI turned on. If you do have it turned on, it's going to allow the QNAP to reclaim that space back to the storage pool so that it can be used for other things as well. So one of the first things you're going to have to do, if you want to enable it for NFS, there's no need to enable it for iSCSI. It's done by default. Um, as soon as you connect an iSCSI LUN from a QNAP into VMware, hardware acceleration is enabled already. Um, so the first thing to do is go to the, your uh, NAS of choice, uh, go to the download center for that product. And here in the list, you get all the firmwares and different options that we've got for the QNAP. The section that you want is the utility section. Um, I normally organize it by title here, and then I just do a control find. And if you search for VAAI, you'll find here the different plugins that we've got. Um, so you've got the newest versions here. Now we've got two options for you. We've got an offline bundle, which is a zip file, or we've got an online bundle, which is a VIB file. Um, anyone familiar with VMware would, will know about the VIB files. So that's the one I've gone with, the, the online bundle. So you would download this and you would upload this into one of the data stores uh, that all your hosts can access. So I've already done that. So if I click over to uh, my vSphere environment, we can see here that we've got um, one host here that is supported with hardware acceleration on this NFS uh, volume that I've got here and one that's not. So I've only installed this plugin on one of them. So I'll talk you through the process of adding it to the second one here. So ESXi host 2 is what I'm going to, to add this to. Um, the easiest method is probably to come to the command line. So I've already typed the command line here to SSH into my ESXi host. So if I do that, it wants the password for it. So I'll just type that in. Um, so now what we need to do is navigate to the path of where we put that file. So if I go to CD VMFS, um, I think there's a volumes folder in there. Yep. So all my uh, contents that I've added in is in the archive folder. So we can see that here in the list. So if we do CD archive, go inside there. And then I've also got a folder in here, I believe, that's called drivers. So CD drivers. So in here, we can see the QNAP VAAI VIB file. Um, so this is the NFS plugin so that we want to add this. So to add this, you need this whole path here um, as well as the VIB file added on. So the command to uh, type in is ESX uh, CLI uh, software, Oops, spell it correctly, software VIB install dash V because it's a VIB file. It's usually dash D if it's a zip file. And now we need to copy this, this whole path that we've got here. So I'm going to paste it in two parts. So I'm going to take the part where it's got all the path for the folder. 
And then I'm going to copy the file name and I'm going to paste that onto the end as well. So if I just do a forward slash and paste that and then push enter. So this is now going to be um, installing this VIB file um, onto my second ESXi host. Um, for it to be fully activated, it does have to reboot the host, um, but I'll give you a demo while that reboot's happening just so that we can see um, exactly how quick files are moving when you're doing it within the host. And I'll also go across to the NAS just so that you can see the network interfaces to illustrate that all of that capacity is not being transferred across the network interfaces. It's just happening within itself. So we'll just wait for that confirmation message to pop up. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we can see that the installation result there says it's updated successfully, but the system does need to be rebooted for the changes uh, to take effect. Um, so we can exit out of the, uh, the command line there. So let's just exit, it's gonna close that down. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll just go to my hosts and clusters and I'll just put that host, um, it says there reboot needed. So I'll just put this host into maintenance mode and then I'll just do a reboot of it. Okay, so we'll just set that going now. Okay, so that's completed. So now we'll just right click it, go down to the power option, we'll reboot it, and we'll just say root boot, root reason, um, upgrade, and we'll just click OK. So now that uh, that host is being rebooted, I'll just give you a little demonstration of if you were to uh, move files around. So if I was to click into, um, let's say, this Ubuntu 2 VM here and go to the data stores tab, we can see that right now this is hosted in my uh, H886, my TS-H886, and we can see that it's on iSCSI2.mvme. So what I'll do now is I can right click on it. I can go to the migrate option. I can change just the storage only. And then if I click next, I'm going to move it from uh, iSCSI2 that it's currently on, and I'm going to move it up to iSCSI1. So when I click next, I can click finish. So that's now going to be migrating that. And if I quickly come over here and look at the uh, single LAN adapter that I've got installed, we'll see that there's not much traffic happening there. So that VM's uh, 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 virtual hard disk is about 30 gigs in size. So that's absolutely doing nothing here uh, to the network interface. There's just a few commands going backwards and forwards between uh, my ESXi host um, and the, the NAS itself. So there's no data being transferred. So if I go back to my vSphere, I can see that it's actually relocated that virtual machine. And the reason that's happened is simply because um, hardware acceleration is enabled on that data store. So as you click through the different data stores here, so we can see here that it's supported on both hosts with all the iSCSI ones because it didn't need a plugin. That's just automatic as soon as you con uh, connect to um, an iSCSI one. Um, we're just waiting for the, um, the, other, the other host to reboot. I can hear the fans going on it now, so it's nearly there on the reboot. Um, but as soon as that one comes back, um, it will um, also show that the hardware acceleration is now enabled for that one. So we'll just wait for that one to pop back up here um, as ready to go. Okay, so we can see that host is back now. So we're just going to take it out of um, maintenance mode. So we'll just go maintenance mode, exit maintenance mode. So that should be up and running again. Um, so that's now running. So we can go and check the different data stores for that uh, host there. So all the iSCSI ones are supported across both my hosts. And the one that we're showing is not supported on one of them was the archive one at the top. So the archive one and the vCenter server one at the bottom are NFS data stores. Um, and both of these are now showing as supported on both hosts. Uh, so hopefully you've, you found that useful. It's a massive improvement to performance to, to make sure that you do have all your data stores um, added to all your hosts uh, with the hardware acceleration enabled. Um, so they call this hardware acceleration VAAI, and it helps in a lot of things, not just file copying, but also creating new VMs, new virtual disks, things like that. All right, thanks a lot for watching.